Well, I guess it's time for part two. I'm still wearing the gray. I guess it's still appropriate, but I really shouldn't wear the same shirt two episodes in a row. I guess I should change. I'll go with blue. You'll see why in a minute. Super Mega Mode. <sighs> Alright, let's get this over with. Last time on Power Rangers, actually, Gosei actually says that at the start of the episode. Previously on Power Rangers. And as a fan of Star Trek, last time on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, I'm actually rather fond of that. We get a quick recap of the events of Part 1 before picking up right where it left off. The Silver Ranger demorphs fully and introduces himself. He says that his name is Orion and that he comes from a planet called Andrasia. Jake asks if this means that he's an extraterrestrial. You know, between Impregnable for Invincible last week and Extraterrestrial for Alien this week, I think Super Mega Force's writers must be getting some pressure from the Dictionary Writers Union. Orion explains that his world was destroyed by the Armada, and then it's time for a flashback. Get used to this, by the way. Orion was a miner on his world, the Breaking Rocks kind, not the can't drink kind, and was about to leave work for the day when the Armada attacked. I actually love this detail of the flashback because it gives us a great reason why the Armada attacked. You don't even need to say it out loud. The world obviously had valuable minerals that the Armada wanted. Orion escapes the attack and runs to his village before seeing in the distance that the Armada has blasted it. He drops to his knees, devastated. Mega Force Power Rangers Mega Force! The intro sequence was really badly timed in this episode. It suddenly jumps to high energy after a very dark, quiet moment. Speaking of the intro sequence, it has added Orion, but thankfully does not go the normal route of spoiling his entire arsenal. We don't see any of his zords. Troy tells Orion it's time to take you to our leader. Jake rightly laughs at the alien movie trope, although the fact that it is a trope means it probably should have been avoided in the first place. They take Orion to the command cave where Tenso loses his robotic mind, but then stops and starts speaking Andrasian with Orion. Orion addresses Gosei very respectfully, calling him Sir and saying that it's an honor to meet him. It kind of goes to help establish Gosei as a Zordon-like like, not equal, figure in the fight against evil. Gosei tells Orion that he thought the Silver Ranger key had been destroyed along with Andrasia and asks him how he found it. Did anyone else really badly want Orion to tell Gosei there's a simple explanation for that? It's flashback time again. And this one goes before the previous flashback, so now we're going all Inception and stuff. Orion was mining when he found a crystal that contained the Silver Ranger key and a strange box. The key was in its figurine form, so if Orion knew that it was a key, how did he not know what the morpher was? Orion kept them to himself, investigating them. When he brought the key and the morpher close together, he began receiving visions of the legendary Sixth Rangers. The numerical term is actually somewhat troublesome here, as we see Dino Thunder White, who's a fifth ranger technically, as well as RPM Gold and Silver, one of whom is a seventh ranger. I'd have gone with something like the legendary auxiliary rangers or something. I sensed that I was meant to find them, he says. Um, where did they go? <clears throat> I mean, other than Robo Knight, who is seen in the vision, by the way, we're not aware of any of the other six rangers being missing. I mean, we've seen Casey and Jaden, so it seems like the core rangers are okay. I really hope that this is something that they get back to later, and this isn't just a throwaway line. After 
leaving the flashback for a moment so that Tenso can teach Orion the word morpher, we go right back in. As the Armada destroys Orion's village, he realizes what the key and the morpher are for. He morphs into the Silver Ranger for the first time and realizes that it's too late for his village and that he's alone now. Why did he morph? Oh, and Orion's voiceover says, at that moment, I knew what they were for. And in the flashback, he says, whatever happens, happens. Pick one. This is inconsistent. Either he knows what they are and what they do, or he doesn't. Orion then becomes a contestant on Survivor, building a beach hut and learning how to fish. He also trains with a spear, but he says that he didn't dare morph. If you're training, why not train to learn how to use your weapons? The Armada ships out from Andrasia, giving Orion the opportunity to use a giant slingshot and the crystal to shoot down one of the last ships. He says the Armada rescued the injured pilot, but left the ship. He repaired it, learned how to fly it, and followed the Armada to Earth. Gosei tells the Rangers to teach Orion the things that he needs to know. We get a very nice detail scene where the Rangers teach Orion about the visual landmarks that they use to find the command cave. Emma and Gia then drag Orion to the mall for a makeover, while Noah is nerd sad because he doesn't get to play with the alien. The next sequence is nearly unbearable. Orion gets a makeover, getting a new haircut that honestly makes him look worse, like a tool. Then it's time for new clothes. This clothing store must sell the largest variety of clothing ever. But then Emma and Gia smack themselves in the forehead and go, Silver Ranger! Okay, not really. And he gets a shiny silver jacket. This sequence is intercut with shots of the boys, bored out of their minds, at Ernie's. Hey, look at that. They actually finished something at Ernie's for once. Anyway, Jake is being the jealous type again and keeps trying to get up to go join the girls, but the boys prevent it. Honestly, the only useful writing anywhere in this entire sequence is Noah guessing correctly that Orion can probably turn into other Sixth Rangers. Thirteen minutes into a 24-minute episode, the writers suddenly remember that there are supposed to be bad guys. The car doesn't even show up, still upset that his previous plan failed. Domerus, yeah, that's Domerus, not Argus, sorry about last time, takes over and sends down Commander Ossigan. I was wondering if his name was a pun on, it's us, again. Ossigan continues the Armada's foolproof strategy of taking over every construction site on Earth, and the Rangers go into battle. Ossigan claims that the Exborgs have been powered up, although the only evidence we get of this is Emma saying it's true. This is artificially raising the stakes, telling us that Silver makes the team stronger without, you know, actually showing us that. In keeping, this fight basically demonstrates how much stronger the team is now with the Silver Ranger. He goes from other Ranger to other Ranger, helping them out of pinches. The team wipes out the obviously powered up Exborgs before turning to Ossigan. They decide to go Legend Mode to Samurai, with Orion turning into Samurai Gold. Sentai Note, Letter 1. In Gokaiju, the Silver Ranger was this super knowledgeable Sentai fanboy, and that gave them a great joke for this scene. He asked the Red Ranger for the gold key with the kanji on its face. He gets handed O-Ranger, which we know of as Zeo Gold. I know the joke doesn't work here, but really, I missed it. The Rangers perform the Samurai Quintuple Slash, with Orion following with the Barracuda Bite. Why not just perform a Sextuple Slash? And please don't tell me it's because sex tuple starts with sex. That would just be stupid. The Rangers teach Orion that using legend powers is really hard, guys! And they transform back to Super Megaforce. Orion finishes us again with the Super Spear Blaster. Sentai Note Number B. This scene in Gokaiju featured an all-silver change, and all of them were Power Rangers, so it would have been really nice to see. However, there were two issues with bringing that scene over. A, it seems like they really want to reserve the Sixth Ranger changes for Orion, and B, more importantly, one of those Silver Rangers was Robo Knight, and we all know that that would raise a lot of questions. Asagane grows. 
As a matter of fact, we see the shot of him growing about three times in 15 seconds. In the command cave, Tenso says that the six ranger keys are becoming energy-lated, um, energy fizzled a little bit. We see MMPR green, Time Force Quantum, and Dino Thunder White glow. And just to drive my earlier point home, by the way, it's kind of clear that Dino White is the fifth key. This means that Orion has unlocked the Q-Rex Megazord. Somehow, Troy gives him the three keys that we saw light up. Listen, this whole sequence is lazily written with next to nothing actually explained. The Q-Rex Megazord is the Time Force Quantum Rangers Megazord. It is red and black, not blue, and it doesn't have a drill ship mode. Where did it come from? If this is the Q-Rex, why does it look different now? How did Orion unlock it exactly? Hey, who cares? Look, new mega thing! It's shiny! Look it! Orion hops in, and just to add another wrinkle to the forehead of older fans, specifically points out this is the Time Force Q-Rex! To which us older fans went, No, it's not! The Q-Rex has three modes. A drill ship mode, powered by the Quantum Ranger key, a dino mode, powered by the MMPR green key, and a Megazord mode, powered by the Dino Thunder white key. In Megazord mode, it can turn its spear into a trident, just like the Silver Ranger's personal weapon. After taking care of the bruisers, Orion activates the Final Strike triple drill attack by using each of the three keys. Each form of the Megazord forms separately and attacks with their drill. Asagain goes blowed up again. The five rangers go back to the mall, with Troy rightly pointing out that Orion is going to have to work with the rest of the team and not just go on a personal revenge quest. Orion is at Ernie's, and Ernie introduces him to the kids that he doesn't know are Power Rangers. They kind of freak out trying to take care of Orion and treat him like a king, until Ernie points out that he works there. Of course, they should already know that, seeing as he served them smoothies one episode ago. The Rangers all have social plans with Orion, but he says it's okay. He's going to be there for a while. Silver Lining Part 2 is... It's... It's Super Mega Force's biggest disappointment yet. After Part 1, my first 5 out of 5 for the series, I was expecting more of the same and for the show to kick into a higher gear. Instead, we get an episode that is far too reliant on flashbacks for backstory, combined with lazy writing perfectly content to not explain very important details. Now you can see why I picked blue. Hoist the... Ugh. Episode 8, Silver Lining, Part 2. Pros, good backstory details. Orion is a very fleshed out character. Cons, over relies on flashbacks, raises some really weird questions, and nothing about the Q-Rex Megazord is properly explained. It's another first, folks. Silver Lining, Part 2, gets one flag out of five. And now, as promised, the combined score. Episodes 7 and 8, Silver Lining. Pros, Episode 7. Cons, Episode 8. Silver Lining gets three flags out of five. I'm sorry if that sounds bitter, but this two-parter just started so well and ended so badly. The flashbacks were nice, but there were far too many of them. And the writing was inconsistent, having Orion arguing with himself about whether he knew what the key did or not, having him morph for absolutely no reason, bringing up something about missing Sixth Rangers for the first time, and yes, most egregiously of all, no explanation about the Q-Rex Megazord. It's changed colors. It has a new mode. This warrants a mention. Heck, have Time Force send it back with a note. Dear Super Mega Force Rangers, the Armada is messing with time. This should even the odds. It's the Q-Rex Megazord. We've upgraded it to work with your Ranger keys and given it some upgrades. Good luck. That's it! 
I mean, maybe I shouldn't expect any more from the show that gave us Bring On The New Powers, or Legendary Ranger Mode Blitz, or Bet You Didn't See That Coming, but come on already! <sighs> okay, well, anyway, this is how we go into the dreaded hiatus. Not with a roar, but with a whimper. We're still about six weeks away from Super Mega Force trying to make up for this. It was recently announced that Super Mega Force will be returning on August 30th with the Power of Six. So, Power Rangers Super Mega Force episode reviews will be back in early September with our review of that. In the meantime, you can check out a couple of the other reviews that I have done, Earth Bites Back and Silver Lining Part One. Especially Silver Lining Part One because its episode is just, it's, it's so, so much better. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to this channel so you can know when my new reviews come out. Share this video with all of your Ranger friends. And leave some comments down below. Did you agree with my score of 1 out of 5 for Silver Lining Part 2? Or did you think it was better or possibly even worse? Um, I'm going to go grab a bottle of water, but uh, you guys check out these other reviews. And until September, may the power protect you.